Hello everyone, I'm Chris and now I will show you how to activate and deactivate the safety areas in safe operation function of breaking before restricted area in KUKA SIM. You will learn how to import a Profinet configuration out of Work Visual and how to use the safety PLC so that you can switch on and off the restricted areas. Let's get back to, into KUKA SIM. This time I want to use the Profinet option that is supported with KUKA SIM and here we can switch the safety rooms and safety tools with the Profinet. First we have to click on our robot and then go to the option package configuration on the right side. In this case we want to use this Profinet S and as you already know you can add it in the files, Up, go to the options, go to add-on and there go to manage the KUKA option packages. Be sure to add the latest one with this little plus here. You might need to restart KUKA SIM for that. So make sure to save your layout before close this window and approve our settings. Now that I have the option package here in my available options, I can assign it with the little plus to my robot and it will directly appear in the assigned options. Now you can see that in the device tree in the option packages is added the safe operation and the KUKA Profinet packages. And the next goal is to add this to the field bus configuration so that we can use it. And for that, I need a work visual export. So how do I do that? I will first export my project right here and save it to my files and say export. Export everything, but inclusive my Profinet S configuration. So I can find it here in my documents uh, and I will open it uh, directly here from the work visual project. Oh, here we go. We have to double click here on the controller so I can activate the KRC5 controller. Now if I go to my option package, I have the safe operation in the Profinet as I know it from KUKA SIM, so it's actually the same. And now I have to go to my bus structure. If you now right click on the bus structure, you can add a new one and then select Profinet and click on OK. We'll add a new Profinet structure here on the device tree. And now we have to double click on that one and then tick the box to activate Profinet device. Tech act and then click on OK. We have this Profinet activated. We need to actually save this controller. So I will go just going to set back our controller. And now I can go to files and here import export and say I want to export a partial project. I go, I continue, I select my controller. Say I would only want this Profinet configuration to be exported. I say continue and I say finish that. So I can close that now and I can now go back to my um, simulation or I'll just show you that here we have this partial project from this safe operation so I can rename it even to Profinet. And now I have to go back to my um, simulation to go here to my field bus configuration with a right click and import the field bus configuration. Where that it will delete the current one, but it will directly also continue to this Profinet that I just uh, saved here under my project. I will open it. Now you can see that we have this Profinet option here under the field bus, which is great. And the next step is actually, I want these rooms on and off. Um, so I will now go to my safety PLC that I have hidden for now. Uh, not to confuse us. So in, with this window I will be able to switch between different protected spaces. But before I can do that I have to go to the configuration and say that the activation is not always active but is activatable by input. Now we have to reset the simulation and click on play. Once you start the simulation, you will see that the room is hidden now first, uh, but the robot is still breaking, so we have to hide it first, and then we will see that actually the room is still there. 
Now go to my robot. I will just make a little uh, change. I will add a loop so that this program will be called over and over again. And I'll just put it into my loop and go back to home because that's the, the place that I can see what's happening here. So I will click on play. And now the options to change this input for the safety PLC. Fighter for you. If I click here on the signal, it will activate it. Now it breaks, and if I deactivate it, it goes full speed again. So here again, it breaks, it goes away again, and I have also this breaking before restricted area on the other side. But in, in general, if I deactivate it, the robot will go super fast all the time. Yeah, and then if I activate it, um, this is this is now the, the special thing. If I activate it and the computational advance pointer of BBRA is already inside this room, it will kind of throw me an error, but this will be the same in the real world. So um, let's try that again. If I activating it when it starts and now I can activate it, it will be slower, deactivated, fast, right? Activate it again and it breaks. But now you can add the different spaces. Let's do this one more time. I put a new monitoring space, so let's add a new Cartesian space. And it's called space number two, that's fine. And now let's just change a little bit the size. I want to place it here on the right side of the robot. So uh, let's change the size a little bit to 200 millimeters times 200 millimeters times two meters. Let's correct this and now I can position it here a little bit between the wall and the table there. It's activatable by input and it's a protected space. So now um, again I go back to my safety PLC and play. And it's deactivated at the beginning. Now I can activate it one. And now activate the second one, and it will break before the restricted area to a full stop. If we our program and our tracing, it should be zero meters per second. And if I go back to my safety PLC in my home tab, and I'll deactivate it, it will speed up again. And here is kind of the beauty of it. You can now set those input and let the robot continue whenever you want. Just be aware that if the pointer uh, is already too far approached, then it will actually trigger you a message like this. Another th a little information, you can now add different tools, activate different tools. If I go back here and said I want to add a new tool, and you can activate it here on the right side, just tick the box. This is kind of now just this general big sphere that I will need to activate first, and then set back my, my simulation and, and play. Over so here, then I can switch through the tools, like now tool number one or tool number two, and again, it will be a different behavior here. My protected space here around the magazine, it will stop completely because otherwise it will collide. If I deactivate it, it will run. And the same goes for this pillar. So if I just leave it like that, it will also first stop at the magazine protected space, but here also stop at that one. And then continue. And I can switch between the different uh, tools right here or I also have the option I'll show you that real quick to change that in the program so I can send different outputs in the logic part I can send our an RCF safety space input or a safety tool input so if I after a um, specific statement I want to switch the tools I can change the tool number here maybe to tool number two and after coming to that point I want to switch the tool back to um, other inputs. I have to change it here to number tool number one. Or 
and if I reset the whole simulation and go to my safety PLC in the home tab and program start with the tool 1 but now go over to the tool 2 after this point back to tool 1 and now I can actually also select these different spaces Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to see more interesting videos about KUKA's simulation world, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Industrial Intelligence.